All right, hey there, fellow coders. Welcome to uh, this much anticipated video where I'm gonna be diving into uh, source tree and how to get your repository set up. So the first step is obviously to install the source tree application. It's good for both Windows and Mac machines. Um, and then basically what you're gonna do is um, I am going to open the code that I have on my computer because you've already sort of um, paired our code base to the repository that's uh, in, in GitHub, right? So it already sort of exists on our computer. We don't want to clone it again, right? Cloning is the process of taking it and creating a brand new directory and putting all the files in there. We've already done that. We've already cloned it, so to speak, by creating it first on our hard drive and then uh, associating it with the repository in the cloud. So we want to open, not clone. We'll open the fresh votes. And usually that's in your home directory, wherever that may be on the, in the, um, uh, Windows machines, it's your user's directory and then your whatever your, your username is and then in the git folder. Um, I think on the Mac, it's probably the same kind of concept. Go to your home folder, git possibly is installed in there. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a Mac guy, but that's, you know, I'm, I am learning a little bit more about Unix systems and, and whatnot. So it should be in your home uh, directory and in some sort of a git folder. Um, and then you go just to the, the base folder wherever your uh, repository was created, which mine is just git slash fresh votes. Even though there's another fresh votes directory, this is where my dot git file is. So this is the, um, this is sort of the folder I wanna be targeting. So I'll select that one. And then it, it opens up this screen. So now you can have tabs along the top, right? So if you want to have more repositories, you can click the plus button to add more repositories. Uh, if you had more locally on your computer. So now, as you can see, we have the master branch here, which has um, our initial commit with the information and then the initial check-in, which was our first check-in. And then the one that I just did in the last check-in and the last video, which was to uh, include the uh, feature and user. Although I think, I thought I had checked in the, um, I thought I checked in the next step too. Maybe I have, let's check out the working copy. Uh, I have not, so there you go. Okay, great. So in the last uh, video, we created the, uh, well, we made apparently a change to the feature um, file, although I can see I'm just adding and removing a blank space. So I don't know, that's probably just a, just like I said, blank spaces. Then we added comment ID and comment and vote ID and vote. Um, so basically this is, it's just a, a nicer view uh, to work with instead of the one that's built into uh, the Spring Tool Suite or Eclipse or, or whatever. Um, if, if the tool that you're using, if you're not using Eclipse or Spring Tool Suite and you're using something that uh, maybe like IntelliJ has a better one, I don't know. Although I have a friend who uses IntelliJ and he still uses Source Tree as well. So, you know, um, it, it's whatever you're most comfortable with, but I, I tend to like Source Tree. Um, because it's a little bit more reliable. It makes a little bit more sense. I like the um, the view a bit better when it comes to sh um, showing me the changes and everything, and, and you can stage individual, uh, what they call them, hunks of code, little chunks of code. Um, it, it's it's kind of nice. I, I, I prefer that myself. Uh, that's why I use it. Plus, if ever there's merging issues, uh, it's so much nicer. You can you can uh, plug in an external merging merge comparison tool. Um, I think that I downloaded one called Diff Merge, uh, which again, for I think that one might only be for Windows, but it it works very very well. Um, much much better to use than the built-in one inside of Eclipse is what I'm saying. So, okay, so let's go ahead and I'll show you how to check in my changes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select all of the changes that uh, I know I want to include, and I'm going to stage them. So then they jump up to the top. Uh, these ones down here, again, I see them in the target directory, so I don't care about these files. Um, I don't care about the git, git ignore either, so uh, I can ignore those. So this, these are the staged changes. So the staged changes are the ones that you are going to be committing. Okay, so if they're unstaged, don't worry about them. They're not gonna be committed when you try to commit. So now you need your commit message down here. Um, the message I will say is, you know, adding um, the vote and comment uh, join tables. Okay, so I'll commit and then you can even choose to push immediately. So that's fair enough. I'm okay with just pushing immediately uh, into the master branch. So I will commit. And if all goes well, it commissions, commissions, commits the code and pushes the code uh, in, onto the interweb. So if I go to GitHub um, and I go to my uh, repositories and I look for fresh votes, 
Um, I should see the latest change. Uh, yeah, here we go. Latest commit was adding the vote and comment join table. So there you go. We know that that commit was pushed properly uh, onto the interwebs and we are good to go. Now, one thing that I want to talk about while we have a bit more time in this video uh, is branching and branch strategy. So basically when it comes to branches, uh, what's typically what typically happens is there's a master branch and, and the master branch, again, this is typical. This is not the, the be all and end all rule, but typically the master branch represents what's in production. And by production, I mean live on the internet, what any of the end users will see at any given moment. Um, fine, great, that's good to know. Um, but there are, there are a whole bunch of different branching strategies that you can use. Um, one of the ones that I'm currently using in one of my, uh, I'm working on a, on a contract right now uh, with development with a team, and they use, the branching strategy they use are feature branches. So whenever someone is developing a new feature, uh, like an enhancement to the application, they create a branch off of master, okay? Well, actually it's not off of master, it's off of the, the development branch. So they actually have a whole other development branch, which is branched off of master. So, because uh, they do sprints, right? Sp uh, agile sprints, which means using the agile methodology, which is a software development lifecycle manager methodology um, every two weeks we have code that we essentially push to um, more or less to production we actually push it to uat first which is a user acceptance testing environment which is the client uh, sees it first and then it goes to production once the client gives it the thumbs up but essentially you can think of it as production so um we have a you have the master branch and then you have a development branch which is where all of the developers uh, will check in their code by the end of the sprint um, and then you have feature branches that branch off of that development branch. And each feature represents uh, an enhancement that either uh, one developer or a team of developers are creating. And then those feature branches get merged uh, into, get pushed into the development branch, which then gets pushed into master whenever you want to release these things. Okay. So the pushes only happen and the merges only happen when you want to release the code uh, into whichever environment so the branches almost can represent environments in this case okay that's a that's a, that's a typical uh strategy that i've seen so there's like a development environment uh, development branch that represents the development environment there is a uat branch that represents the uat environment um, the master environment represents production uh etc etc maybe a qa one as well that kind of thing so that's that's a typical use case that I've seen with branches, uh, but you know, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's whatever works for you and your business or you and your uh, job that you're currently working in. Um, you know, that's just the way it goes. So I'll show you how to create a branch because I need to have a branch. I should have created a branch earlier um, and maybe I can do that. Ah, I wonder if I can create a branch off of like the initial check-in. Can I create, reset, I can reset the, oh, here we go, branch. Can I branch from there? Yeah, I can branch from a specified commit. So I can call this, you know, fresh votes 01 uh, initial check in. And I might even say zero, zero, one. Do I want to have three zeros? I'm trying to think in terms of how many times I'm going to be checking my code in. Ah, oh, this is, it, because uh, I want it to be, it, it, it appears in sort of alphabetical uh, order. So I want it to be ordered properly. Um, so I, I have, you know, zero, zero, 001, that represent that gives me 900 check-ins before stuff gets out of whack, right? Um, so that's good enough. I'm going to say create a branch. I've never done this before. So, hey, bear with me. Let's see what happens. Okay, cool. So I've created a branch. And now you see the, the UI here, we see that there's a pink one now and a blue one, right? The blue one you see represents a different branch, which is the master branch. And the pink one is, is uh, behind by two check-ins, right? So that's cool. And now if I, since this branch is now highlighted, uh, that means that my code base is pointing there. So if I go back to my code base, we're gonna see, give it a few moments, boom, there it goes, it just changed. Now it, my fresh votes is pointed to the fresh votes 001 initial check-in. Uh, so if I close all this stuff and I look at my code here, you'll see that my code is old, right? This is old code. This is not, this do, doesn't have any of my domain objects yet or anything like that. So you might think, oh no, I lost all my code, but no, we're just looking at a previous 
point in time, which is what branches um, will sort of allow you to do. There are different points in time for different developers. Um, it's pretty cool. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to switch back to master by double clicking. Okay, it'll switch back, and then you'll see this will change to master, right? And then hopefully my code will uh, will update as well. Let me hit right click and hit refresh. There we go. So now, boom, look, magically all these domain objects just appeared, right? Um, well, not magically, because I refreshed it and I had switched to a different branch. So your, your code, your physical directory structure will be changing um, as you're switching between branches because you're going to have different code, right? So now I can right click on, on the next check-in, which was adding the first domain objects. And I can say create patch branch. Here we go. And I can call this branch fresh votes. 002 uh, creating domains part one. I can create that branch. Boom. And if I go to my code and watch, it's going to switch from master boom to the fresh votes 002 branch. I can refresh my code. And look, now we only have feature and user objects. Remember, that's what happened back in the past when we had hit that point. We'd only created two. And then the next one is where we created. Um, our uh, comment and vote, uh, which we call it, um, domain objects. So now let's again switch back to master. And now let's create a branch for the most recent one, right? So let's branch off of the most recent, che recent check in, which will be fresh votes underscore 003. And this is creating domains part two create branch. So now this latest branch to creating domains part two is in line. It's, a, it's in the same uh, spot as the master branch, which you can see right here. See master is in line with fresh votes 003. So that's the most recent uh, branch that there is. Okay. So there we go. Uh, so now um, that all that stuff that we just did, I assume is now reflected inside of my um, GitHub. So if I click on this, you'll see right now the branches, there's only one, it's only master. So if I refresh the page, I'm hoping, oh no, I don't see any branch. So I wonder if I need to check in these change or push these changes uh, to GitHub in some way, shape or form. Um, this is odd. I expected it to work. If I say push, remote branch. Okay, so there is no remote branch yet. So what if I push all three, I'm just rolling. I'm just <laughs> doing I'm doing stuff I've never done before. So I'm I checked these boxes to push it to a remote branch. And these are remote branches from what I can see don't exist yet. So I'm going to say push. And I will assume that once I push, uh, these remote branches will be created uh, inside of GitHub. So let's this is what we call a YOLO, ladies and gentlemen. You only live once. Let's push and see what happens. What's the worst that can happen, right? Okay. So let's refresh over here. Okay, four branches now. There we go. We have four different branches. Uh, oops, that's too far back. Let me go back to fresh votes. And now we see our branches are right here. So there you go. We need to push those changes. So there was this, you know, we hadn't pushed the changes. That's why we were in the situation that we were in. So fantastic. I am very pleased with that. Um, so now you have some more, a much deeper understanding now, hopefully of uh, branching strategy, even though the branching strategy that I've done here, um, I'm not creating branches to represent um, uh, environments. I'm creating branches to represent my points in time for my tutorial videos. Okay. So that's, sort of, it's convenient for me to do it that way and convenient for you because now for every single video, whenever I do a little bit of code, you can check out the code exactly for that moment in time, uh, wherever it is that I am in my teaching. So you can go through and, and tweak it or do whatever you like with it, right? So a very popular thing for my students is if I'm, if they're watching, you know, video 10, they will check out the code for video number nine and then code along with me for video 10. You see what I mean? Um, that's a very popular thing. And that this is with this branching strategy that I've chosen, it enables you to do that.
cool. So that's the branching strategy that I have chosen. So you can see it's completely flexible. You can do whatever you like with this kind of thing. Um, and there's no better way to play around with it than locally right now uh, with something like this because you can't mess it up. If you clone it onto your own computer, it's on your computer and only on your computer unless you're trying to push changes up. Um, although I don't know if you're gonna be allowed to push changes up, you probably have to request, do something called a pull request, which is actually saying, hey, Trevor, I've got some code that I think you would want in your app, please review them and, and at your discretion, insert them into your code base for the public to see. Um, that's like a pull request. So anyway, um, that gives you an, an idea. And like I said, there's no better way to, to, than to learn this than to play with it yourself. So clone it. Play with it all you want, mess around with it. It's gonna be on your hard drive. Uh, you're not gonna mess up my code base, like I said, unless you're pushing changes, which I don't think you're gonna be able to push changes. Like I said, I think it's only a pull request. Unless I'm completely mistaken, uh, if you can push changes, then let me know, because that, you know, that's gonna mess things up. Um, unless your code is good, but anyway. Cool, so let's, uh, let's end there and let's uh, move on with our lives. In the next video, uh, we'll dive into some code with respect to uh, probably creating some controllers and getting into Spring security to do some authentication and authorization stuff. So that'll be really fun. So stay tuned for that in the next video. As always, take care of yourself. Happy learning and bye for now.